So, so far we've talked about um, uniform motion, which is constant velocity, um, but clearly velocity isn't always constant, right? Um, you can change between velocities, and when velocity changes, we call that acceleration. Um, so we can define acceleration as the rate of change of velocity. And a rate of change is always a delta something over delta t. In this case, it's a delta, sorry, it's a delta v. Um, this should be a. So acceleration is delta v over delta t. Um, we could give this guy a unit. Oops, the SI unit for this. Um, would be um, the meter per second per second, right? Because upstairs is a meter per second and downstairs is a second. So sometimes you will hear someone say meters per second per second. Um, although when you divide by meters per second by another second, you actually get meters per second squared. So this is more often how we write it, meters per second squared. But to say meter per second per second actually makes some sense. Um, it's like saying um, if something is accelerating at um, one meter per second squared, that means every second it gains another meter per second. All right, so if um, it's been accelerating for five seconds, it has increased its speed by five meters per second. Um, one thing that's useful to see here is that acceleration, um, you, can, you can derive another equation from this. All right, so um, delta V is V final minus V initial divided by delta T. Um, and so you can rearrange that equation. If you multiply by this delta T and then add the V initial to the other side, you can get this, that um, V final equals V initial plus A delta T. All right, um, that's super useful. In fact, that's one of the kinematic equations. Um, and so I'm gonna copy that, hopefully. Let's move that over to our equation sheet, if we can. Nope. Please. And hey, you know what? We'll just rewrite it. That's fine. Um, so would we say v final, or sorry, v initial, sorry, it is final. v final equals v initial plus a delta t. Now, this is only true for constant acceleration. Right? Or if this is an average acceleration, I would really like that mark to go away. But that's not happening. Fine. Fine. You win, iPad. Okay. Um, so let's go back here. So V final equals V initial plus A delta T. Um, the next kind of obvious question is to say, okay, then what do um, motion graphs look like for this? Well, uh, this looks like constantly changing, um, constant but uniformly changing speed, right? In fact, if you if you squint at this a little bit, you can see this is the equation of a line, right? This is um, y equals b plus mx. Do you see that? We usually say mx plus b, but so v initial must be our intercept. M is our slope and X is our is our delta T. X is our time. Okay, um, that's what we did when we when we plotted things versus time, Visit position versus time. Time was on the X axis. Um, all right, so let's just think. What does um, so this will be our time axis? What does position versus time look like for constant acceleration? What does velocity versus time look like? And what does um, acceleration versus time? Well, let's choose constant acceleration, okay? So let's just choose some, um, some value like A, right? We could call it A naught or something, but... Uh, do this. Mm -hmm. Really just want it to be a straight line, please.
please. Please. Try the top. Whew. Okay, that was a close one. Oh, come on. Okay, so we've got constant positive acceleration. All right, so we're speeding up. Um, Again, we just said V final equals V initial plus A delta T. That looks like a straight line, right? Where the slope is, um, where the slope is acceleration. So here. This point right here, that's V initial. That's V at time equals zero. In fact, if you take this equation and plug in, if, uh, if time equals zero seconds, or minutes, or hours, eons, whatever. If um, time equals zero seconds, then v final, e sorry, v function equals v initial. Okay. Um, and the slope of this guy, again, is rise over run. Rise is going to be a delta v, and um, run is going to be a delta t. That's just A. So the slope of velocity versus time is acceleration. And remember, the slope of um, position versus time is velocity. But now position is going to be increasing indeed, but increasing at an increasing rate. right? So the slope of our plot needs to get um, steeper and steeper. right? And it's starting at, at non-zero. Um, so in fact, what this is going to look like is um, uh, some kind of parabola. And we'll derive that here in a second. So there's our position versus time. So position versus time is increasing, right? At increasing at an incre increasing rate. Again, slope of position versus time is velocity. So I can see here the slope is small, and the slope gets bigger and bigger as we go. Um, and that's exactly what velocity is doing, is getting bigger and bigger as we go. So I want to remind you um, that the way to go, um, here, let me move this. The way to go from velocity to, uh, to position is area, all right? So we said slope is uh, slope of v versus sorry position versus time is velocity and um, displacement displacement delta x is an area of um, v versus t all right so slope of position is velocity area of velocity is displacement. And so let's let's think about that. I'm going to erase this v initial for now. And I'm just going to say let's go let's go from um, I don't know from here to here. This is some delta t, right? And I want to say in this delta t what is the delta x, right? So I could say um, what is displacement in this delta t? What is the displacement in that delta t? Uh, well, it's 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 a simple area. I told you, um, the area v versus t is delta x. That's what I'm looking for. Is displacement is delta x? So how do I find the area of this? Well, let's dot this up here. And this up here. So that region looks like a trapezoid. Do you see that? It's two parallel sides and then two sides that aren't parallel. Um, do you remember the equation for the area of a trapezoid? Neither do I. Actually, I think I could come up with it, but um, there's no need. Because what is this trapezoid? This trapezoid specifically is a rectangle and a triangle. Um, and that's going to be super useful for us. So I need um, this area and this area. You see that? Perfect. So how do I come up with those areas? Well, the area of a rectangle is um, 
length times width and a, tri a triangle is half length times width, right? So let's put those all together. Um, and maybe for now, we'll take this plot and move it just so I can I can do my math right here. Fantastic. Um, let's change that to just a little smaller. So delta x equals the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle. So the area of the rectangle is going to be delta t times, um, let's call, um, this position right here. Oh, that's a little terrible. Not a lot terrible, just a little terrible. Let's call that position. That's V initial for that region. That's actually a lot terrible. And this is V final for that region. For this region, right? So we're starting at V initial, we're ending at V final. I know I called this V initial originally. Um, that's v initial if we're starting at time equals zero, all right? So what we call initial and final depends on what we're calling delta t. And right now, I'm calling this region delta t. Okay. So um, it looks like it's just delta t times v initial. Okay. And then I need the area of this triangle, and that's going to be half times delta t times um, v final minus v initial. So delta x equals delta t times v initial plus half delta t v final minus v initial. I'm going to rewrite that so it's just a little more legible. Just a little more legible. Not a lot more legible. v final minus v initial. Okay, makes sense so far? Fabulous. Um, this is not, though, the only way to represent this. Sometimes it's useful to have an equation that only depends on initial, um, initial conditions, right? So I've got v initial and v final here, but if I recall, um, v final equals um, v initial plus um, a delta t that's going to be useful for me. All right, so I'm going to plug that in. Let's use a different color. I'm going to take this and plug it in right here. All right, I don't do a whole lot of a derivation in this course, but um, it is useful sometimes to see. So delta x equals delta t times v initial plus half delta t times v initial plus a delta t minus v initial. Oh, well, look at that. OK, so the v initial minus v initial goes to 0. And I've got half delta t times a delta t, which is um, a delta t squared, right? Looks like I didn't move u far enough. So let's do it. Good enough. Okay, fabulous. Um, so let's do maybe two more steps. So delta, nope, 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 nope. So delta x equals, um, I'm going to rearrange those. V initial delta t plus half a delta t squared. Okay, and if I do one more thing, if I call delta x x final minus x initial, I could say x final equals x initial plus v initial delta t. So I just called delta x, x final minus x initial and added to the other side. Plus v initial delta t plus half a delta t squared. That is the equation of a parabola. Do you see that? Right, we've got um, ax squared plus bx plus c. That's exactly what we expected this to be, right? So I said the word parabola, um, but now we know it really is exactly a parabola if acceleration is constant, 
right? Why did that change? I thought it was purple. Anyway, if acceleration is constant, then velocity is a straight line, and all of this derivation is true. And if that derivation is true, then this really is a parabola. So that's the second of the kinematic equations. So I can go back to my equations, please. Here. I wonder if I can erase that. Ha <laughs> ha, nice. You can't win, iPad. OK, so my second equation here is x final. No, I want it to be um, the same color x final equals x initial plus v initial delta t plus half a delta t squared. And if you've had a, um, a physics course before, you've probably seen that. Um, again, this is dependent on constant acceleration. And co acceleration does not have to be constant. Um, but um, Lots of acceleration can be modeled that way. Um, in fact, the rate of change of acceleration is something called jerk, which is uh, a quantity that matters for like roller coaster design. Um, okay, so these are two kinematic equations. There are there are a couple others. There's just one more I want to talk about in this course, and that is if you plug. Um, really, here's the point. So I have an equation for finding velocity if I know initial velocity. So final velocity if I know initial velocity, if I know initial velocity, acceleration, and time. And I have another equation for finding position if I know of a bunch of initial things. But what if I don't know time? What if I, I want to relate the final velocity and the initial velocity in a region to displacement? Right? Well, what you can do is plug one of these equations into the other equation, right? If I take, um, if I take this equation, solve it for delta t and plug it in here, I can do some math to it to make a third equation. I'm not going to make you sit through that algebra. If you are feeling, um, <laughs> feeling like you want more, do it yourself. Plug, plug that into the other equation. I will just give you the result. The result is this v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. All right, so that gets me a relationship between initial and final speed and displacement over some, uh, some region. Um, and we'll see when we work these problems um, when some of these equations are more useful than others. Uh, again, they're all always true. Um, it's just sometimes one is more useful than the other. Um, okay, so that's good for this lecture. Thanks for um, thanks for listening.